Annamie Paul is the leader of Canada's Green Party, and she is with me now. Uh, Ms. Paul, good to see you again. Let, let's start with your reaction to the fiscal update today. Uh, did you hear what you wanted to hear from Krista Freeland? You know, every time we have a statement like this, it's an opportunity to communicate real vision uh, for the future post-pandemic. And while there are some elements in there that are, are nice to see, it's not a comprehensive, coherent plan for our future. And that's really what this moment demands. What was missing from it? What was missing was any indication that we're going to have a climate plan. What was missing was the um, intention of bringing long-term care under the Canada Health Act, uh, truly bringing in universal child care and not just sending it back to committee and for conversation yes, yet again. A real plan for completing our social safety net and also getting us to net zero as quickly as possible. That's really what I wanted to see. You talked about uh, ahead of the, uh, uh, the economic update about the need to hear a message of, of hope and vision. I think you've, you've touched on, on what's lacking in the vision part. Um, what about the hope part? We are still dealing with a very serious pandemic. Uh, the government did announce some more supports and, and some more spending. Were you satisfied with what you heard on that front? The supports are absolutely the right thing to do, and the Green Party will always be there to work with the other parties to make sure that we get through this pandemic uh, as, as well as we can. Uh, but what we need to do now to make sure that we're not back in this position in the future is really talk about what comes next. There's the light at the end of the tunnel. We're talking about a vaccine uh, that begins distribution next year, early next year, which means what comes next? Uh, that's the part that I want to hear more about. We're one of the few um, OECD countries that isn't already far down the road in terms of our post-pandemic recovery plan. And so that's really, uh, that's really the missing piece, and, and we can do both. We can have a strong response while at the same time planning uh, for the uh, pandemic recovery. Uh, the, uh, the finance minister did today talk about, uh, uh, at least to some extent, and, and I, I know it doesn't go as far as you said uh, you had hoped it would. She mm -hmm. talked about, uh, again, uh, a national child care plan after some consultations, and maybe we'll get more about that uh, in the budget coming up. Didn't hear anything about uh, pharmacare. Uh, is, is that a big failing uh, from your point of view? I would just say in general, whether you're talking about the lack of mention of guaranteed livable income, uh, the, um, the reintroduction of national pharmacare plans, and the reintroduction of a commitment to national childcare, but without a plan, uh, that all the people who work in those areas will tell you that all that is left now is leadership and action. And so if uh, the government is not producing that, then they're really not living up to what I said, which is that w the ambition uh, that should match uh, the challenges of this moment. And so the Green Party can do that. And uh, we're hoping that people will take another look at our policies. We propose strategies for all of those social programs. Uh, there has been some criticism, of course, of um, some of the spending plans of the government from some quarters and the fact that uh, we didn't hear much today about uh, fiscal anchors and, and how to rein in spending when the time comes. And uh, Greens have always boasted about being fiscally responsible and prudent. So um, what about that today? Are you How concerned are you that there's really no plan to, to rein in spending uh, of up to $100 billion, uh, the finance minister says, over the next three years? Well, the most fiscally responsible thing that we can do now is really to plan for a green recovery. And again, this is why most of our OECD peers have already started down that road. It is the greatest economic opportunity of our lifetime. It is the thing that is going to provide us with the short-term jobs that we need to kickstart our economy and the long-term jobs that we need to secure our economic future. And so I completely support spending if it's going to help us get us through this pandemic and if it's going to set us up for the future. It's really all a question of where we put the money. Um, we're investing in our future. It's the right thing to do now. We should have that scale of ambition. And if we do, then we actually are setting ourselves up uh, for a really strong, stable, certain economic future. I mean, you, you, you wanted to hear more detail, but I'm, I'm not sure that a fiscal update is often the place where we hear that kind of detail. That would, that would come in a budget. So uh, I guess I'm wondering how much slack you're prepared to cut the government between now and, a, and the next budget, which should be, um, by all accounts, sometime in February or March. Uh, when we would expect to hear more details. Are you, are you okay waiting till then? 
Well, we've been waiting already for quite a long time. Uh, this uh, government has been in place for six years now. And whether we're talking about uh, guaranteed livable income or the introduction of new universal programs or protecting uh, people living in long-term care facilities, these are all things that have been talked about and promised for years. Had they been in place, uh, we would have been much more protect protected during this pandemic. And given that it's entirely possible that uh, this session of Parliament is not going to survive to see most of the promises in the statement uh, put into place, the question then becomes who do people in Canada truly have confidence in? Who do they really trust to actually take promises into action? And uh, I think they have to question whether this is the government to do it. I believe that uh, we are much better placed uh, to do that. All right, Green Party leader enemy Paul. Uh, good Thank to talk you. to you again tonight. Take care. You too, Peter. Take care.